I analyze the settings of some of the best controller players in all of Apex Legends, so you don't have to. And in this guide, I'm going to be breaking down the real secrets and bring to you in detail the settings, the secret sauce, and the strategies that give these top players that unbeatable edge that they have. Before we get into it though, for those of you who do not know me, I'm Psycho, professional Apex Legends coach with a track record of success at the highest levels of Apex. I've led teams to multiple top finishes in tournaments and work with players Players from all around the world. I decided to make this guide to give you the real sauce on what the top pros are actually using and why. Starting it off, if you want to aim smooth, if you want to move fast, if you want to play like a pro, we need to talk about how you're gripping your controller. It might seem super basic, but trust me, so many players get this absolutely wrong. A big mistake is taking your fingers or your thumbs off the joysticks. Do not do this. Keep your aim and your movement steady and make that a crucial pinpoint of how you're gripping your controller. All of the data that I have gotten throughout my entire time researching this shows that true ALGS pros actually make sure that they have full control over their sticks throughout the entire time to which they are playing. Here's some of the main grip types that these players tend to use. First one being claw. It's where you're bending your fingers so that way you can press your face buttons without moving your thumb off the joystick. It's tricky to master, but it's really game changing if you can do this. The other one that they tend to do here is they place their finger on the left side, they move that forward in order to walk forward, and they use their thumb in order to click on the d-pad. So essentially their claw grip either is on the left side or the right side, some even do a bit of both. But the point of the matter is you're using your index finger on either side in order to maintain full control over your sticks. Secondly here we have paddles. Paddle gripping it's essentially just using extra buttons on the back of your controller. like these. It keeps your thumbs on your joysticks and it allows you to have a more enjoyable set of precision without doing a bunch of finger gymnastics that you have to do in order to play claw. The third and last one here is a hybrid grip. By the context clues, you probably are guessing it's a mix between paddle and claw, and you'd be exactly right. So it's the best of both worlds, you're using paddles while also maintaining clawing. So if you're unsure what grip will suit you best, really think about how your button layout works with that, which we're gonna get to next. Most professional players pick custom layouts, and that's just simply because they offer a lot of flexibility and a lot of customization. So some notable mentions and types of customizations one of them was using bumpers to shoot an ADS instead of using triggers. Personally, I've actually coached a player that has done this, and his name is Aiden the Destroyee. Aiden did this, and he basically said it was because of the fact that it allowed for a faster response, and it allowed for a more flexible way of ADSing and shooting. Another honorable mention here, another player that I have coached actually, is Reed, who uses one of their thumbsticks in order to move while they're in death boxes, but they use it by putting jump on on the bind. So in other words, they use jump on that stick in order to move around in the death box. And remind you, Reeds is actually a really great player. He just recently made Japan. So congrats for him. LCQ to Japan, wild ride there. That said though, every single advantage and disadvantage on a player's custom preferences, I could sit here and all day go over it with you. There's so many combinations. So players in general though, they will either use custom, which is the majority of the pack, default, which was secondary to that, or button puncher, which was third to that. So my advice, if you're going to actually do this though, start by doing exactly what the pros do. Choose custom if, if it's going to help your entire grip type, but if you're naturally already clawing and you're naturally actually already doing things, default is never a bad move, nor is button puncher. But remember, focus on what feels natural and comfortable for your grip type and what's going to allow you to keep that whole stick control like I was talking about earlier. And hey, if these tips are helping, but you're still struggling to implement them, or if you want to take your gameplay to another level, I offer personalized coaching one-on-one -on, -one on Medify. I break down all settings, I break down all strategies, and I give you the extra help and that edge that you might need. So besides that, if you have any questions, or you want to share your setup of what you're doing, make sure you drop a comment below. I want to hear from you and do not forget to subscribe for more tips and in-depth guides just like this one. My best advice for this one when it comes down to pros, I'm sure all of them use default, but the thing is some of you guys might be already used to a different type of layout stick-wise after playing different games for years and playing them a certain way. So it's in the best interest of the player to use whatever they're already familiar with. Whatever generally is better for you 
is to the benefit. It does not necessarily offer any extra benefit to be one way or the other. It's all preference on this one. Interacting and reloading. Most players at the top here, they choose to use tap to use and tap to reload versus any other setting. Tapping is just simply much faster with interactions and reloading. It just minimizes the entire chance of any type of hesitation or delay during a fight. You want to be able to reload fast and you want to be able to stay in the fight as quick as you can, right? So not waiting for that full second or that extra couple milliseconds for the reload or for that interaction. It's just better that way. Now, some may argue on the counter side for the pros that it reduces the chances of accidentally interacting with things in your environment like a door, giving you a little bit more control over how you reload versus how you interact with something in your environment. Nonetheless, I found that a lot of pros chose to use tap to use and tap to reload rather than tapping to use and holding to reload and or any other options. On the topic of crouch toggle or crouch hold, your crouch setting is absolutely super important it makes a very big difference. Most players tend to play on toggle, but the margins between toggle and hold were not actually super far off. Let's boil down why that is and why the margins are that close. So each pro, they think of it like this. Crouch toggle can be less taxing because you don't have to consistently hold buttons down. This may be important for those who use claw or hybrid grips because they hold a button down for extended periods of time and that can lead towards a bit of finger strain. Besides that, pick Making toggle also frees up fingers for other actions, making it really fluid with how somebody moves and how they find themselves walking up or crouching for no audio and making themselves able to sit in a spot for a while without having to strain themselves. Now on the opposite side here, there's actually pros to crouch hold, of course, as well. So crouch hold might be taxing for some, yeah, but the trade-off is more control over movement. Performing things like crouch spamming during fights on hold is much better. Hold just unlocks a whole different set of movement potential. It allows for better b-hopping. It allows for better wall bounces. It allows for simple and good movement text to be performed with a lot of grace and a lot of ease. So when it comes down to choosing between crouch toggle and crouch hold, if you're not pro to finger fatigue or strain, then you might want to consider it. Also, if you're willing to push through it, you might want to consider it. Hold is a great choice, but if you decide to go with toggle, there's no harm in that either. Just being mindful that too much strain can lead towards a lot of issues down the road, okay? Do not cause yourself arthritis, and yes, that can actually happen when you're playing claw. I'm not kidding. When picking aim toggle versus aim hold, most players, they chose to press hold, and the reason why is because the pros of hold, holding the button just allows for an immediate control over your aim. So it's absolutely crucial in that fast paced situation or environment where that little millisecond matters. On the opposite end, there wasn't really many shows to do aim on toggle. I do know that M and K players tend to do this, but in terms of aim toggle, toggling aim, it just kind of reduces a lot of demand on fingers. So if you're looking for that, that might be helpful. It makes it less tiring when you're playing over a long period of time, but it just does not make it simple for you. And it makes aiming a little bit more inconsistent. The survival slot. The survival slot is just something that allows very quick access to survival items like heat shields or mobile respawns or evac towers. Deciding whether to have this feature on or off can affect how swiftly you can actually react in clutch moments though. So pros of having it on it allows for a very fast set of decision making. You want to put an evac tower down, boom, you get it down now. But there is a pro to having it off. You are able to use that D-pad and customize it to a different bind or a different function. Disabling it though, it's not something that a lot of players do. Adapter triggers are made for those PlayStation 5 controllers and it's very variable. It's definitely resistant more on the gameplay though. So when you're pressing down on the trigger, it's more so a realistic trade-off type of feeling. So when you enable it, adaptive triggers, the pros of that is it enhances that immersive experience, giving that more tactile feedback to when you're actually using the trigger. This is better off to be off and it really only applies to getting just a more realistic feel and it's for PlayStation 5 controllers for the most part. So trigger dead zones, you want to have as much control as you possibly can. You want to be able to have that trigger be decently sensitive to you pressing it so that way you get those shots out or you're aligning your aim ADSing 
correctly and as fast as you possibly can. So when it comes down to none versus max, the pros of none here, it allows and ensures your input is registered instantly, providing absolute control and precision during any type of thing that you're doing when you're trying to ADS or when you're trying to go ahead and pull the trigger and shoot something. But ideal world, you keep it on none and you have the quickest precision possible on that. Since we're on the topic of dead zones, the movement dead zone, guys, it is a very simple choice here. We got small and we got large. So it just determines how much you have to move your stick before your character ends up moving, right? So the pro of using small dead zone here, which is what the majority of pros use, is that it allows that greater control, very responsive, very good. The pros of a larger one, some people might decide to play a larger one, even some pros, because their stick, it has some issues when it comes down to moving. It's a bit more sensitive, perhaps, and it has a lot of stick drift to it. So if you have a lot of stick drift when it comes down to moving and you're having issues with not just sliding across the floor, it offers a lot more stability and a comfortable experience in order to put it on something like large because you don't want to be moving around and you want to be able to stay on your feet the way that you want to with full control. On the menu cursor speed, a lot of pros, either they choose about a fourth of the bar, a half of the bar, or a bit more. Menu cursor speed, it affects everything from your inventory to how you navigate the menu in the game. Most top players set theirs about one fourth of the way or a half of the way, balancing a bit of speed and control with it, right? So for a fourth, it's a slower menu cursor speed, but it provides sort of a precise control when navigating through the menus, and it just kind of makes it so you're less likely to misclick something. On the other end, the pro with the half bar or more, it is very fast and it allows for fast navigation, but if you're not careful with it or you have issues with your sticks, it might create an issue where you're a little bit off kilter or a little bit off of the center of where you want to be and this kind of can create an issue where you're off of where you want to be but if you can handle it and it's fast in general for you and it works it can enhance a bit of proficiency when you're moving things out of your inventory you're navigating a menu of any kind or through linear the reliable standard right the go-to it's pretty much one of those things that is very easy to master it offers a balance between speed and precision a lot of pros from phony naughty imperial hal they all use this so if i were to list them all here and look at the tallies of all the data that i collected as well a lot Lots of them use 4-3 linear here. So it's simply just that universal. Now with the dead zone that comes with this, with 4-3 linear, your choice of dead zone is actually very crucial. None is what a lot of people choose to have and it provides the most control and generally preferred by a lot of those top players. Any single controller that you're gonna pick up, when you plug that in for the most part there, you're gonna have a little bit of stick drift when you put on none. So at the end of the day, go for none first, try to master that and if it's really, really bad, I'd go for small. There's also a per optics adjustment that some of these guys might make when they're on 4-3 linear. So if you want control over your ADS settings without diving into like full ALC optics and whatnot, this just lets you set like one of those ways of doing it. If you're going to go in and you want to just adjust how the aim works to a slight degree and like how responsive your sticks are from sensitivity to sensitivity, it's one of those things where you could use these per optic settings and you're able to kind of adjust exactly what the multiplication of it is. ALC per optic bleed through is sort of a balanced approach. So if you're looking for a more customized way to do things without going fully into depth on ALC and doing all the micro adjustments, ALC per optics bleed through just might be your answer and what you're looking for. Pros like Waltzy use this method. It's the type of setup that offers a lot of control, particularly for those who are looking to really fine tune a bit um, on the scopes or fine tuning to look on their like normal sensitivity when they're using a gun without an optic. So the big advantage here is that it just allows you to use these decimal points, right? You're able to basically say, okay, I don't want to necessarily be at three on 4.3 linear here. I want to be on 3.5. So you go into ALC, you turn it on, you go into per optics, you turn that on and you adjust these things. Now you have to make sure that you're at one when it comes down to the ADS speed here. Okay, because it's a multiplier in this case. So if we have 3.5, for example, and then we're going on over here to one, we basically can have it so this works out. The key thing on how these bleed through is you have to make sure that these settings are on for the per optics in ALC, but you can go out and then turn off ALC itself. And this allows you to bleed through on the per optics and using ADS in this way. So the thing is about some pros, I've talked to Aiden and I've also viewed a video that Designful made on his 
sensitivity settings and his controller settings. And both of them have reported that it could be buggy on the transitions between ADS and hip fire. There's no solid data that I found that fully proves this, but some people have noticed that that is an issue where they have a bit of a bug between these two things and it isn't necessarily as effective and it can lead to inconsistency when you're playing. But more or less, this is a really good one that not a lot of people are doing and it's fantastic. ALC! Okay, the customization powerhouse is what I call this right here. So ALC settings, they allow for a lot of deep customization, right? Giving the player the full control over every aspect of their aim. So while a majority of pros stick with that standard sensitivity setting and they just do that 4-3 linear, it's dedicated groups so far that I've seen of certain players that swear by ALC. Jen Burton, a perfect and ample example for this once again. It's somebody who advocates for it. The margin here is small, but the potential benefits are very significant. So if you're willing to invest that time, Time, go for it, right? So we went through a lot together. Sensitivity, we went through a lot in terms of the button layout, menu cursor speed, stick layouts, everything in between. If there's one thing that you should take away though, it's that a lot of pros will look for the most control possible over their controller. They want to be able to find things that work fast for them without wasting a millisecond of time if they can help it. So remember this, when looking to improve though, it's not about copying what the pros do. Even Jen Burton will tell you that. People think, oh, it's all about aim. It's not all about him, and I can confirm it myself. If you're not in a good position, you are not doing anything in this game. It's about understanding why these settings work and why they might not work for your style or your comfortability. Top players don't win just because of one setting. They have fine-tuned every aspect of their gameplay over time. And you can too, if that's something you work hard enough to do. Take what you've learned here, experiment with it, and find what feels right for you guys. There's no one-size-fits-all in Apex. That said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.